Good morning. morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together on this first Sunday of Advent. As we gather together expecting the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At the same time, we wait for his coming again when he will come to claim his people and we will gather with him and spend all of eternity with him. We wait today. Good morning, how are y'all? It's nice to see y'all this morning. As the preacher said, it's the first Sunday of Advent, so we got our Advent read now. Does anybody know what the first candle is? What it's called? Or what it stands for? The first one is the uh, candle of hope. You might why it might be called the candle of hope. Well, it's like uh, the preacher said first thing this morning um, that it, it kind of signifies that we were waiting on the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, we were promised a, a Savior, and so this is kind of signifying when Jesus is to be born in Bethlehem. But Another purpose of it, of the whole Advent read, is that we need to be alert for when Jesus comes back. It has a dual purpose. So we kind of celebrate that too. I kind of want to talk about uh, each Sunday as we light another candle, what each one means. Because it's important. It's, a, it's a, an important symbol in the church. I'm going to give you a Bible verse to memorize. I know you all like memorizing. I'm going to give you one to go with this first candle. It's Romans 15, 13. And it says, May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. That's one way we can remember the hope candle. Romans 15, 13. Let's have a prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for these wonderful children. And uh, help us to be renewed in hope. And uh, help us to remember that every time we look at the Advent wreath and the first candle lit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember all those that are sick and those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to continue to be with each and every one of these and to touch these in a mighty way. There are families that are still bereaved. We ask the Lord to continue to be with each and every one of these families and to hold them close and to walk with them mightily. Do you have someone that you would like for us to lift up in a special way today? I know Greg's mom was in the hospital. I tried to get up with him this week and I was not able to. Uh, we want to remember his mom and, uh, and continue to lift her up. Uh, any others? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this day, as we wait for your coming, as the people of old waited for the Messiah, for the birth of Jesus Christ. We too wait for his coming again. Heavenly Father, prepare our hearts as we wait for his coming. Heavenly Father, that we might truly be about all that which you have called us to be about. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are sick, for all those that are shut in, for those that are bereaved, for those that's in the hospital. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might walk with each and every one of these, that you might touch these, that you might heal their bodies, that you might encircle them with your loving arms as you give them faith and strength and courage for each day. Heavenly Father, continue to be with each and every one of us gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts and you know our circumstances and our situation. Lord, you know everything about us. So, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you might touch us 
that you might guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, continue to bless this church, continue to use it for the uplifting of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, that we might make a difference in the lives of those around about us. Heavenly Father, that we might reach out with your love and your concern. Heavenly Father, that we might bring light in the midst of the darkness, that we might bring love in place of hatred, and that we might bring hope in a time of despair. Heavenly Father, continue to send your Holy Spirit upon this congregation. Heavenly Father, that everything that we do and everything that we say might bring glory and honor to your holy name. Heavenly Father, go with us now throughout the remainder of this service. And Heavenly Father, we give you that praise and that glory and that honor. And Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. For in him we find life and we find it abundantly. In him we find that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. And for the prayer in which he prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray. And we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our responsive reading is found on page 755. As we read this morning from Psalm 24. <clears throat> the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and those who dwell therein. For God has founded it upon the seas. And established it upon the rivers. And who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Who do not lift up their souls to what is false. And do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessings from the Lord. And vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek the Lord. Who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the ruler of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is this ruler of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord is the ruler of glory. By way of announcements, when Miss Joyce Stoddard passed away, the church sent a meat, a meat tray to the family, and if any of you would like to help on the expense of that meat tray, if you will just see Glenda or uh, Ronald, uh, they would greatly appreciate it. Uh, and I appreciate uh, reaching out to the family uh, during the time of her death. Today at 4.30 instead of 4 o'clock, 4.30, we will have the children's play practice for the Christmas. So keep that in mind. Uh, next Sunday at Four o'clock at Shiloh, the PPRC will be meeting. Uh, you will be meeting to uh, let the district superintendent and the bishop know whether or not you would like for, for the pastor to return for another year. Uh, so you be in prayer this week as we make those decisions uh, about uh, which way the church should go, and you let the PPRC know how you feel about whether or not the pastor should return. I appreciate the privilege of being able to serve you this year. After two years of retirement and coming back, uh, we still uh, enjoy 
being with God's people and leading God's people. And as long as the Lord gives us strength and uh, we're able to do the work, then we're here for God to use. And so y'all think about it as the PPRC makes that decision this coming Sunday uh, as they meet at Shiloh. And then here at 6 o'clock next Sunday, we will have our Christmas uh, children's program and our fellowship. Remember to bring the uh, finger foods and the drinks as we celebrate this time of the year. Um, today is the last Sunday for the quarters for uh, that we will be taking to the memorial home uh, on this coming Wednesday. The choir will be going to the memorial home and singing with them and we will present them the quarters that we have been collecting between Shiloh and Dow's. Uh, for a lot of those folks, it's the only money that they have coming in, and I appreciate all the quarters that you have given so that we can make a difference in the lives of those people. And then we will continue to collect the quarters for the next six months for no malaria. Uh, a child in Africa under six years of age, every minute uh, a child dies from malaria. And the Methodist Church has been on the front burner trying to make a difference in their lives. And we have cut the rate in half of, of the children that's been dying from malaria. And so this is a worthy cause. Uh, the bishop has asked that the South Carolina Methodist Conference raise a million dollars during this year for no malaria. So we want to try to do our part, and so the quarters that you bring for the next six months will go for no malaria. Are there any other announcements that we need to make today? May we worship the Lord with our tithes and our offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts and for the givers. Heavenly Father, that these gifts might be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. When we pass the buckets along, and some of you may wonder where that money goes, that money goes to help the memorial home folks uh, most of the time they own Medicare and Medicaid and so that's all they get and so they don't get a supplement from the folks to help with the cost of being there in the nursing home and so what we take up in these buckets every Sunday eventually we send it down to the memorial home to help them and I appreciate all that you do for them to make a difference in the lives of those folks so thank you so much. Reading this morning from the Gospel of Luke, the 21st chapter, beginning with verse 25. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexed at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly body will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable, Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful 
or your heart will be weighted down with dissipation, drunkenness, and anxieties of life, and that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this day, for this scripture, and for the message that you have placed upon my heart as I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear that bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Our subject this morning is while we are waiting. At the end of the Old Testament, the people of old were waiting for the coming of the Messiah. They were waiting for the birth of Jesus Christ. The signs was there in the Old Testament. His name shall be called Emmanuel. His name shall be called Jesus. He shall be born in Bethlehem of Judea. And all the signs of his birth was there, but they waited and they waited for his coming. And in the New Testament, we see that being fulfilled as Jesus Christ was born in a manger in Bethlehem of Judea. As those people waited for the coming of the Messiah, we are now waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ to claim us, his people, that we might spend all of eternity with him. We don't like to wait, but everywhere on this earth is waiting rooms. If we go to the doctor, we wait. If we go to the hospital, we wait. If we go to the VA, we wait. If we go to the Social Security place, we wait. If we go to a restaurant, we wait. We don't like to wait. It's just not in our nature to want to wait. But we wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to return. A couple weeks ago, I went to Subway on 418. There was only two or three cars out front, and so I figured I could run in and get a Subway sandwich and be on my way. And so I walked in, and there was 22 soccer players from Emmanuel College waiting in line. I waited about 10 minutes and they waited on one. I figured if I was gonna have to wait on 22, I might as well go somewhere else because I just didn't want to wait. I drove into downtown Fountain Inn to the, the subway there and there was only one in line and I made it through. But uh, we just don't like to wait, it's not in our nature. And in this younger generation, they don't like to wait as much as we do in the older generation because they think they got to have everything right now and they don't want to wait for nothing. But Jesus Christ tells us that we need to wait. He says, while we're waiting, we need to wait with patience. And that's something that many of us don't have much of is patience. But Jesus says we need to wait with patience. Why? Because we do not know when he's coming. He does not know. The 
Angels do not know. Only the Father knows when he's coming. He says he will come like a thief in the night. He will come quickly and suddenly when we least expect him to come. But he says we will know when he comes. Because the trumpet will sound, the eastern sky will open up, and Jesus will come with his angels. And he will gather from the four corners of the earth his elect. He will gather from the four corners of this world all the people that believe in him. And so he says for us to wait with patience. But while we're waiting with patience, he tells us not to continue to dwell on the signs and continue to look to the heavens. Because if we look to the signs and we look to the heavens, then we will miss out on the work of the kingdom. And the work of the kingdom is down here as we reach out to our neighbors, as we reach out to one another, as we share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to one another. We spread the good news of Jesus Christ while we're waiting. And he says, don't continue to look for the signs and look to the sky because if you do, you will get caught up in those signs and you will get caught up with the false prophets and there are many of them and they will come in his name and there will be many cults that will say that they are Christ and, and they are Christ's people and to follow them. And so we need to be about the work of the kingdom rather than spending our time Look into the heavens because we will know when the trumpet sounds and Christ comes when the sky is open up. So we wait with patience, but we also wait with faithfulness. And when we think about being faithful, we think about, as Justin talked about last Sunday, about Abraham. But you see, God chose Abraham and he told him to leave his family and the urn of the Chaldeans and go and begin a new nation. And they would be God's people and God would be their God. And Abraham went not knowing where he was going. Abraham made some mistakes along the way, but he was faithful to God and God watched over him. And God had promised him that his descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky and the sand upon the seashore. And Abraham, as he waited faithfully and he waited patiently, he waited for a hundred years. Sarah was 90 and Abraham was a hundred when Isaac was born. God continued to be faithful to Abraham. When Abraham offered up Isaac as a sacrifice, God provided a way out. He provided another lamb for the sacrifice. And because of Abraham's faithfulness, there is the 12 tribes of Israel and there is the Jewish people because Abraham was faithful. During World War II, Albert Einstein said, I put my faith and trust in the institutions. I put my faith and trust in the institutions for the freedom and and the morals. And he said that when they faced oppression, when they faced Hitler, they went silent. He said, I put my faith and my trust in the newspapers and the editors. And when they face Hitler and the Nazis, they went silent. He said, I didn't have no faith in in, in the church. I didn't believe in the church. But he said it was the church that, that stood up against the oppression there in Germany, against Hitler and the Nazis. It was preachers like 
Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was willing to give his life and stand up against that oppression. And Albert Einstein said, I turn and put my faith and trust in the church because they were the one that stood solid during that time. Folks, we need to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to thank him for what he did for us on Calvary's cross as he shed his blood and gave his life for each and every one of us. And we need to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because, folks, there will be those that will come in the name of Jesus that will be a false prophet. Those like Jim Jones or David Koresh, Sun Mun Moon. We saw all of them in our days. We've seen people like Charles Manson lead a cult, and they will be cults, and they are continuing to be cults today, and they are continuing to be false leaders today. And so it's important for us to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and his shed blood. And so as we wait patiently, we put our faith in Jesus Christ. And then he says for us to be prepared. Now we are beginning to prepare for the Christmas season. We have put up the Christmas tree. We have lit the first candle of Advent. We have decorated the church. We are getting ready for the birthday of Jesus Christ. The stores have already gotten ready for the coming of the birth of Jesus. They've had Black Friday now for about a month, and, and so they are preparing for, for the Christmas season. And we are preparing our homes for the Christmas season. Yesterday we had the three grandchildren, and uh, they decorated the Christmas tree, and the little six-year-old did most of the decorating, and uh, she took the box with the, angel, with the manger scene, and, and she set up the manger scene by looking at the box, and uh, she got it all together. Uh, we're decorating our homes for, for Christmas. As we get ready for the Christmas season, we need to also prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus Christ because he said, I'm coming again to claim you that where I am, you may be also. And how do we prepare our hearts? We prepare our hearts by praying every day. We talk to the Lord. We communicate with the Lord. We don't try to manipulate him. We don't try to put him in a box. We just simply talk to the Lord and have a personal relationship with him, and he talks with us. We walk with him and we talk with him, and he tells us how much he loves us. And then, folks, as we pray, we aren't to face the days ahead with excitement. Folks, could you imagine if we had the kind of excitement that they had down in Columbia yesterday with 90,000 people with those white handkerchiefs waving? Could you imagine what we could do if we had that kind of excitement? Or what about last night with six seconds left in the ball game, Stanford kicker kicked the field goal to beat Notre Dame and this people came out of the stands and ran and mobbed the folks. If we could have that kind of excitement about our Christian faith, if we could have that kind of excitement about the coming of the Lord, what a difference we could make in the lives of others. So this morning as we wait for the coming of the Lord, let's wait with patience because we know He's coming, and he's going to keep his promise. Let's wait with faithfulness. Let's continue to put our faith in Jesus Christ, and let's prepare our hearts, because we don't know what today may bring. We don't know what tomorrow may bring, but we know he's coming. It may be today. It may be tomorrow. It may be 100 years from now, but he's coming, and he's coming to claim us. So, folks, let's keep singing while we're waiting. Heavenly Father, be with each and every one of us as we prepare our hearts. Help us to be patient and faithful as we wait 
Heavenly Father, we ask it all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.